السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته This is Riyad Rizazi We're coming you to uh, uh, Our series Walking with the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Walking with the Prophet um, Episode number 33 or 34 Yashmin she knows Salam alaikum Yashmin What episode is this today? What episode are we on? Is it 33 or 34? Walking with the Prophet Alaikum Salam Nawal, how are you? Alaikum Salam Sara and all of you guys out there. And so may I call you Alaikum Salam Barakatuh from Facebook. Ahlan wa sahlan. Alex Taj. Ahlan wa sahlan. Oh, it's 35 today. All right. Zakallah khair Yasmin. Okay, so it's it's um, episode number 35 from the uh, Sira series, Walking with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, as I've been saying, it is not just a Sira. No, it is not a Sira. It is actually more than the Sira of the Prophet. It's actually uh, living with the Prophet Muhammad. That's why I call it upon the footsteps. So that's why I call it walking with the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. And today I have a surprise for you. Today, inshallah, I have a beautiful surprise for all of you. How are the brothers and the sisters on Facebook? How are you guys doing? And those on Instagram, how are you guys doing? How's everybody on Facebook doing? And those of you on Instagram, how are you doing? How's everyone keeping up? How are you guys keeping up? Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, doing great. Allahumma lak alhamd. Alex Hajj, Ahlan. Alex Hajj from... Uh, from the St. Catherine area. Wa alaikum salam. And Salina Al Fandi. Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallam. Wa sallam. Wa sallam. Muhammad. Ahlan Sayyidan. Wa ahma. Ahlan. And Naim Banat is there, my man. And Light Spread came in today as well. MashaAllah. And Mu'nisa, she's in the house tonight. MashaAllah as well. Who else is in the house tonight from Facebook? Who else is in the house tonight? What is going on with Instagram? Where's everyone? Moni says he's there. Who else? Good. Rubina Azam. Ahlan wa sahlan Rubina Azam. Marhaba. Okay. Alhamdulillah Yasmin. Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair. Today, as I said, I have a beautiful surprise for all of you, inshallah ta'ala. Um, I, I remember I, I promised for a poem, right? I promised a poem for all of you because I've been giving, you know, if you remember those of you since we started, you know, the past Ramadan, you know, or every now and then. I would throw in a poem or a song, right, for all of you. So today, inshallah ta'ala, we'll have a special poem. Today I have a special poem, but this poem for tonight, it will be uh, in form of a letter. A letter from uh, a wife to her husband. And then the husband will reply to his wife, inshallah. So, so today will be really special, right? After we finish the seerah, inshallah ta'ala. Ya hala, ya hala, ahlan, 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 wa marhaba. Ahlan, ahlan, bin noor, al-qalb, ahlan. Okay, wa alaikum salam, Rubina, azzam, and Rose, Lili, and Tasneem, halwan, ahlan, ahlan. Rose, alaikum salam, rahmatullah, wa barakatuh. So today, as I mentioned, sisters and brothers, yes, it is just not the desira, it's something called walking upon the footsteps of the Prophet, but at the very end, the surprise. I have not sang for you for a long time, nor have I shared any poems for you for a long time, but today, inshallah, you want to stay on. Don't go away because I'm going to share with you a very special poem. A very, very special poem. A letter from a wife to her husband. A letter from a wife to her husband. And then the husband will reply to his wife. It makes me so emotional sometimes, but I'm going to try, inshallah ta'ala, to hold my tears when I, when I do this. So... That's at the end. And inshallah, I'm not going to keep it, you know, I'm not going to keep this too long. You know, normally between half an hour to 40 minutes max to try to engage all of you, inshallah, talking about Prophet Muhammad, alayhi So yesterday, brothers and sisters, remember when we talked about, you know, the Prophet migrating to Medina and setting up the, the, the survey, that sensor survey, building his intelligence team, uh, alayhi salatu wasalam. And then, uh, if you remember, he was sending expeditions testing the water then he you know he found out that uh, uh, abu sufyan was taking a caravan out from mecca uh, towards asham and that that you know caravan was basically 
the belongings of the Sahaba of you know of the of the Muslims, the Sahaba that that left everything behind them when they were in Mecca because they left everything behind. Quraysh took possession of everything. So the Sahaba they just came out with their deen. They came out to save their you know their faith, and um, and then uh, so when the Prophet Muhammad you know came to know, uh, he والسلام, came out with the Sahaba. He came out with the Sahaba. They were about 313 or 314. Between 313 or 314 people were as Quraysh. They were over a thousand with, you know, so many horses and, and, and camels. But the Muslims, they had about only like two, two horses they had with them. And they were not going to fight. You know, they just went after the caravan. They went after the caravan because the caravan had about 30 people, right? Had 30 people with them. So they said, this is our belongings. This is our possessions. We're going to go back and get our possessions. Uh, brothers and sisters, I have a question, a very, very important question. Prophet Muhammad, before migrating to, to, to uh, Medina, Prophet Muhammad, before migrating to Medina, he, remember he had amanat. He had amanat, like Quraysh, they left, you know, some amanat with him. And then, you know, when he, before he left, he told Ali radiallahu anhu, to uh, to give the amanat back to the uh, to to the Quraysh. So now this caravan, you know, that is moving from Mecca to the Sham for business trade, you know, the Prophet Muhammad when he came to know, he told the Sahaba, let's go and attack that caravan. Then why didn't the Prophet Muhammad, since it's their belongings anyways and their possessions, why didn't the Prophet Muhammad took you know the amanat because the amanat you guys took everything from us so i'm not going to give you your amanat back but why the prophet didn't do that why when he heard about the caravan he moved right he asked the sahaba to go and attack the uh, you know that caravan why didn't he take the uh, the amanat back from Quraysh? you know whereas they're all theirs anyways it belongs to the sahabis that went with the prophet muhammad but instead he did not do that but when he heard about the caravan moving right he attacked, you know, he said, let's go and attack the caravan of Abu Sufyan. So my question to you, my brothers and sisters, why Prophet Muhammad did not, you know, take the amanat that he was given before he migrated to Medina? Why he made sure that he returned every amanat that somebody, you know, from Quraysh gave him? Why he made sure that he returned that to them, you know? Whereas when he heard about the caravan, you know, uh, 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 you know, you know uh, traveling for trade, he asked the Sahaba to go and attack the, that caravan. So the question is why? Who can tell me why, sisters and brothers, those of you on Facebook and those of you on Instagram? Why did the Prophet do so? Very important though. Why did the Prophet do so? Why? Anybody? Anybody? Why Prophet Muhammad had to return the amanat that people gave him in Mecca, right? And why? To uphold the image of him being Zal. What's Zal again? Layla, don't talk to me, Rifia. Talk to me in Arabic or English. Are you talking Rifia to me again? To uphold the image of him being Zal. I don't know what Zal means. I don't know what Zal means, right? I don't know what that means. But, you know, the question was, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Talk to me either Arabic or in English, but don't, don't talk to me in, in, uh, in Rifia. So, to uphold the image of him being something. Okay, what was it? Who was, who is in authority? I don't know what you mean, what you mean by that, Yashmin. Why Prophet Muhammad had to give back the amanat, but then when he heard about the caravan trading, you know, from Mecca to Medina, he says, let's attack the caravan. By the way, those who come in on, you know, a little bit late, Inshallah, there is a very beautiful surprise at the end, maybe half an hour, and at the end, I'm going to share with you a very beautiful poem. It's just, you know, a woman, a wife, you know, sending a letter to her husband, and then the husband will, Inshallah, reply back to his wife. So this is a very special surprise bonus to all of you. Being a leader is their right over him, a trust. He was a mean. People trusted him. Why would he break his promise? Okay, I like everything I'm here. I'm reading here. Rubina Azam, she says, because he was an, it was an amanat, great. It, it, it did not belong to him or Muslims. Rubina Azam, she got it right. Uh, he don't want to break the trust. Shazia, she got it right. That was that he was trustworthy. That was right. Being a leader. Naam, exactly. That was the in, one of his attributes. Amanat al-Amin. Exactly, Salina. All right. She got it right as well. 
all of you understood. So if I give you an amana, right? And then let's say we have a, a business transaction, you and I, right? We have a business transaction. And then let's say uh, there was some money that I have to give you. And then you say, well, I'm not going to give you your money because I'm not going to give you this uh, uh, amana because you have to give me uh, my money first, right? So that's separate. That's two, two, two different, you know, totally different things. You know, it was an amana which I have given you, right? Uh, that's between you and I. That's separate. But then comes in this business trade, right? And I uh, and then uh, I owe you money, right? I owe you money. And um, uh, so, but those are two different transactions. Those are two different transactions. They're not the same. So I still, I have to give you, you know, I, uh, the, the amana is separate. The amana, you know, I have to give it back to you. But then when, when, when it comes to some business transactions and then you have to give me my money and then you did not give me the money, it says, okay, well, because you did not give me the money, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to not give you your amana. No, those are two separate things. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, you know, that, that's why he, he, he told the Sahaba, yes, this is, this is your belongings. This trade, this caravan has all your belongings. Let's go and attack it. And in fact, the order came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then with regard to the amanat, it's a separate thing. It's a separate, totally separate thing. So I think you all understood why the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, you know, made that move. Brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad today is 53 years old. Or no, he was 55 years old. Because he migrated, he was 53 when he migrated. Today he's 55, two years after the migration to Medina. Um, so when he collected the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum uh, the Sahaba, because Abu, uh, Abu Sufyan, he heard, he had also his intelligence team bringing him the news. So Abu Sufyan, he made a detour. He made a detour and then he went through the coast or from the coast. So now, as the Prophet Muhammad was going, you know, to attack the caravan, the caravan changed its detour and went and took a different route. Prophet Muhammad came to know. So now, and Quraysh is coming. Because Quraysh, they came out to save the caravan, to save their trade, to save their, you know, the money. But they wanted just to save the caravan. The caravan now is safe. The caravan now is safe. Instead of, you know, Quraysh, now there were uh, some discrepancies or disagreements amongst them. Some of them said, you know, because those who said let's go back had their own family members from, from the Muslims. They didn't want to fight. They said, well, we just came because of the caravan. The caravan is safe. Let's go back home. But the majority, including Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl says, we're not going back. We're here. We're going to fight. We're going to fight Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now on the Muslim side, the Muslims were also stuck. If and كما أخرجك ربك من بيتك بالحق وإن فريقا من المؤمنين الكارهون. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah in Surah Al Anfal, I mentioned that yesterday, and I said please try to read Surah Al Anfal because Surah Al Anfal chapter Al Anfal talks a lot about you know the battle of the battle of uh, of Badr. So they did not want to fight because they were not ready to fight. The caravan has taken a detour so the caravan is safe now the muslims are you know stuck there they're facing either they two options either to go and and face Quraysh and fight them or to retreat but it's too late for them to retreat they're already there in the almost in that battlefield in Badr what it's called Badr so the prophet muhammad collected the sahaba and then he told them ashiru alayya ayyuhan nas Tell me what you think on people. Tell me what you think. What should we do? Should we retreat? Or should we face them? Quraysh has, is coming. You know, they, they, they're going to attack us. They're going to fight us. So what should we do? Should we retreat back to Medina? Or should we fight them? So Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr stood up. Radiallahu anhu and, and, and he said something good that we're with you, Ya Rasulullah, regardless of what you decide to do, we are following you, Ya Rasulullah. And then Umar stood up and said the same thing. Uthman stood up and said the same, same thing. Al Miqdad stood up and said the, the same thing. He says, Imdi Ya Rasulullah, Al Miqdad. All these are from the Muhajirin. None of them are from the Ansar. All those people that stood up so far are from the Muhajirin. 
They said, Ya Rasulullah, one of them, you know, Al Miqdad ibn Amr, he says, Ya Rasulullah, we're not going to tell you what, you know, uh, the people of Musa told Musa. The people of Musa, they said, Idhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila innaha huna qa'idun. They said, go, you know, and, and fight you know, with your Lord. Go to your Lord and fight. We're not, we're going to stay here. We're not going to remain here. We're not going with you. So Al Miqdad says, we're not going to tell you what the people of Musa told Musa. Go, you know, anta wa rabbuka, we're sitting here, we're standing here, we're not going with you. We're going to say, go, idhab, faqatil, inna ma'akum, inna ma, inna ma'akum qatil. We shall be with you. We're going to follow you. If you tell us to, to uh, uh, cross this ocean, we'll cross the ocean. Whatever you tell us to do, we shall do. And the Prophet was happy. But Prophet Muhammad wanted to hear from different people. He wanted to hear from the Ansar. He wanted to hear from the Ansar. And then he kept on saying, Ashiru alayya ayyuhan nas. Ashiru alayya ayyuhan nas. Tell me what you think of people. Tell me what you think of people. What should we do? What should we do? And then Sa'd ibn Mu'ad. Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, you know, the, the, the elite of uh, Sayyid al-Aws, the master, the leader of al-Aws, the tribe of Aws. He says, Ka'annaka tudiduna ya Rasulullah. As if you are, you know, you mean us, O Prophet of Allah. As if you mean us, the, the, the Ansar, ya Rasulullah. And then the Prophet, he nodded, yani, I need to hear from you. He says, my people, the Muhajirin, but I need to hear from you as well, the Ansar. And then he says, Ka'annaka tududuna ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said, yes. Ya Rasulullah, laqad amma aman nabik. Wa saddaqnaka wa a'tainaka uhudana wa mawathiqana ala sam'i wa ta'a. Oh Rasulullah, he said, we have believed in you. We've believed in you, O Rasulullah, and we made an oath that we shall protect you, that we shall defend you, that we shall, you know, assist you and, and, and be with you, Rasulullah. We gave you those oaths. That we shall obey and hear and listen and act, Ya Rasulullah. Fawdi, Ya Rasulullah. Go move on, O Prophet of Allah. He said, move on, O Prophet of Allah. Even if you were to go and cross this ocean, Ya Rasulullah, we shall cross it with you. We're not going to leave you behind. We're going with you. We're all the way in, Ya Rasulullah. Not a single man will stay back. If you were to tell us to cross this ocean, not a single man from us, the Ansar, will stay back. We are all in, Ya Rasulullah. And then he says, And he says, Ya Rasulullah, take from our wealth whatever you wish and leave whatever you wish. What an amazing, I mean, look, the Prophet Muhammad is listening to this. And, I'm, and I, as if I can see him, his eyes are becoming, and he's so, so wide. And his face is becoming so bright. And he's smiling when he's hearing this. As if I see him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hearing this amazing news from, you know, Sa'ad bin Mu'ad. He's telling me, Ya Rasulullah, all our wealth is, is yours. Take whatever you want from it and leave whatever you want from it, Ya Rasulullah. وَتُوَكْلَنَا مَا شِئْتْ وَيَكُونُ الَّذِي أَخَدْتَ مِنْ أَمْوَالِنَا أَحَبَّ مِنَ الَّذِي تَرَتْلَنَا And he says, that which you will take from our wealth will be more beloved to us than that which, in fact, you will leave for us. Yeah, and if you were to take more of our wealth, we will be happier than from that which you will leave us, you know, behind Ya Rasulullah. And you take as much as you want, take whatever you want, we are behind you, you know, 100%. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلْيَكُنْ لَذِي أَخَدْتَ مِنْ أَمْوَرِنَا أَحَبْ إِلَيْنَ مِمَّا تَرَكْتْ وَلَهْسَلْ مِنْ مَا شِئْتْ وَعَادَ مِنْ مَا شِئْتْ he says, ask whatever you want, we're with you, Rasulullah. So Prophet Muhammad made that move and says, we're going, we're moving forward. وَإِذْ يَعِدُكُمُ اللَّهُ إِحْدَى الطَّائِفَتَيْنِ أَنَّهَا لَكُمْ وَتَوَدُّونَ أَنَّ غَيْرَ ذَاتِ الشَّوْكَةِ تَكُونُ لَكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ بِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَيَقْطَعَ دَابِرَ الْكَافِرِينَ لِيُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ وَيُبْطِلَ الْبَاطِلَ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُجْرِمُونَ Now, there are two things. You know, either they will fight and they will have to go and fight and, and, and face Quraysh. And Allah has promised them two things, either either to win or those who are to become martyrs, the other promise is al -fiddos. Two things. Here's the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. Winning the battle, although they were only 313 or 314, winning the battle and for those who will get martyred, Allah Azza wa Jal has promised them Jannatul Fiddos. 
the two good ones, either Al Jannah or Al Nasr, or victory. So they're becoming victorious, anyways, because they came forth, halas, they left everything. As I mentioned yesterday, brothers and sisters, they were not ready. Some of them came with only their, their izal with them, they didn't even have the nida. They have nothing to wear, only something to cover their private parts. Imagine, like the man by I mentioned yesterday, Sawad Nuhaziya. He had nothing. He had only, you know, Izar covering him from the from the bottom, and then he didn't have the, uh, you know, the rida. When the Prophet pushed him, you know, and he says, "Make up the line," and I'll go back and make the line up, and then the guy said, "Ya Rasulullah, you hurt me. You know, I want al qasas. I want to hurt you back." I mentioned that story yesterday, and then. Uh, and then he says, okay, well, go ahead, Yalla Qasas, go ahead and do it. And then he says, yeah, so take off your armor, take off your shield, take off your shirt. Take off your shirt because I'm not wearing anything. And then the man, he jumped at the Prophet, you know, and he kissed his belly. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did you do what you did? Oh, so what? He says, Ya Rasulullah, you see, we're not ready for this. I'm not ready. With it. You know, we did not come prepared to fight. I may die tonight. Well, I may die, I may die today. And I would... I would have wanted, Ya Rasulullah, that you know, if I were to die today, the last thing I would have done is I have kissed your belly. The last thing I would have done in this dunya is I would have kissed your belly, Ya Rasulullah. And then I can die. Brothers and sisters, this happened in the second year of the Hijrah, and it happened in Ramadan, and the Muslims were fasting. Imagine, they were fasting, the Muslims, in the Battle of Badr, which happened in Ramadan. And by the way, just so you know, the, the majority of the Muslim battles like Fath Makkah, Fath Makkah also happened in Ramadan where the Muslims were fasting. You know, the uh, uh, the 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 Maghul, the Tatar, the, that big that battle with the uh, with the uh, you know the leader of the Mamalik and the, the 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 Tatar. You know, they although that that big battle that happened happened in in Ramadan. The majority of the you know, the, the these Muslim battles happened. In Ramadan, where the Muslims were fighting. Ramadan, the month of blessing and the month of barakah. So, my brothers and sisters, as the Sahaba were lining up, the Sahaba were lining up, an arrow came from somewhere. An arrow came from somewhere and hit a Sahabi and killed him. His name is Haritha. His name is Haritha. The battle hasn't even started yet. Just a, an arrow came from somewhere, nowhere, and then killed this man. So his mother, Um Haritha, she came to the Prophet crying. She came to the Prophet crying. Uh, ya Rasulullah, what happened to my son? I need to know what happened to my son. Where is he today? Let me tell me where he is today. If he's in Jannah, I shall I shall be patient. I shall be patient and persevere. But if he's in hell, if he's somewhere else. I'm gonna cry and I'm gonna show Allah what I can do. And then the Prophet told her, Ya Hari, Ya Umm Haritha, it is not, not Jannah, it is Jannat, and your son has reached the Firdaus Al A'la, Allahu Akbar. It is not just one Jannah, it is Jannat, it is not just one heaven, it is levels of heavens, levels, heavens, heavens, and he ranks, but your son has reached the highest level in Jannah. The battle hasn't even started. So the first يعني, martyr was this man by the name of Haritha. Haritha. And then there was another man by the name of Umair ibn al-Hamam. Umair ibn al-Hamam, he was eating some dates. And then he uh, told the Prophet Muhammad, you know, uh, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, are you promising us Jannah? Jannah, Abdu has samawat wal ard? You know, if you were to be martyred, are you promising us, you know, Jannah, like heaven, the width of it is the distance between the heaven, you know, the earth and the sky? Is this what you're promising us if you were to die today? He says, yes, Jannah, Abdu has samawat wal ard. And then he says, bakh, 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 bakh in Arabic, bakh, bakh. Yani, Allah, Allah, Ya Rasulullah, Allah, Allah, Ya Rasulullah, bakh, bakh, Ya Rasulullah, Allah, Allah. The Prophet says, why are you saying bakh, bakh, why are you saying Allah, Allah? Why are you saying Allah, Allah? The man says, Ya Rasulullah. Uh, ya Rasulullah, I want to be Azra and Akuna min Ahliha. I want to be from the people of Jannah. I want to be from the people of Jannah. And then the Prophet says, You are from the people of Jannah. You are from the people of Jannah. And then the man in the battlefield, he kept on eating his dates. And then he realized, Oh, if I were to wait until I finish my dates, it's a long life. And then he threw his dates and he proceeded into the battlefield and he got martyred. Brothers and sisters, before the battle started, 
there was a culture at the time between the Arabs. They used to call for the duel. You know, a man from this camp will call the man from the other camp. Yani a man from the this army will call a man from another army to face one another. So came in Utbah ibn Rabi'a and Shayb ibn Rabi'a and then Walid ibn Utbah ibn Rabi'a. So a father, his brother, and his son. Three people from the elite of Quraysh. Utbah ibn Rabi'a and Shayb ibn Rabi'a and Al Walid ibn Utbah ibn Rabi'a. So a man, his brother, and his uh, son, they came, you know, three of them, they came in and they asked the Muslims for a duel. So uh, some three people came out from the Ansar and then they said, no, 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 we want people from us, from our families, yani from Mecca, from Quraysh, from uh, the Muhajireen. And then, and then who came out? Ali came out, Hamza came out, and Abu Ubaid ibn al-Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib, the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad came out. Hamza, the man with the feather. I will talk about the man with the feather. Hamza came out. Ali came out. And then Abu Ubaidah came out. Three facing three. Hamza killed Utbah ibn Rabi'ah right away. Hamza, Hamza is, a, is a lion hunter. Remember when we were talking earlier about, you know, about the Sahaba and about Umar and Hamza. Hamza is a, is a lion hunter. He's a, he's, a, he's a very strong man, tall and strong. The uncle of the Prophet Muhammad, he went right away, he killed uh, Shaiba. And then uh, Utbah. And then his brother, uh, his son, was killed by Ali. Anhu and then came that, you know, the duel between Abu Ubaidah uh, ibn al Harith, ibn Abdul Muttalib, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Al Walid. So they were exchanged. Yeah, and he, uh, uh, you know, as they were fighting, they exchanged some, you know, uh, like, you know, strikes between the two and both of them, you know, stroke each other. Abu Ubaidah got hurt. Uh, Hamza and Ali jumped on, you know, on, 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 on Walid and then they killed him. And then they took, uh, uh, he got wounded. Uh, Abu Ubaidah got wounded and then the Prophet held him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the blood was dripping, he was wounded. And then he says, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, our fate, have I exceeded? Have I met your expectations? Have I met what Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, has expected from me? Have I our fate? He says, Allahumma inni ashad annahu wafa. Oh Allah, I bear witness that my cousin Abu Ubaidah has wafa, has exceeded, has fulfilled the promise. I bear witness that he has fulfilled the promise of Allah. Prophet Muhammad testified for his cousin and his cousin died later on. Not in the battle, but he died later on because he got wounded. The battle started. The Muslims, although they were outnumbered, but as you know, yes, they won the battle. So much so that there were two kids, youngsters, two kids. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, he mentions this. He says, one, you know, Mu'ad and Mu'awad. Mu'ad and Mu'awad, two brothers, 14, 15. They asked, uh, they asked Abdul Rahman, uncle, uncle, you know a man by the name of Abu Jahl? He says, yes. He says, can you show, can, we heard that he's been abusing the Prophet Muhammad. He says, yes. He says, please, could you show him, you know, if you see him, could you, we, we want to see him, you know, if you, because we don't know how he looks like. So these two boys were from the Ansar. They don't know how Abu Jahl looks like. He says, please, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uncle, if you see him, just show him. Show, 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 show uh, him to us and, 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 and we'll, we'll take care of him. So Abdul Rahman was so impressed. So during, as the battle started, you know, and then uh, uh, Abu Jahl was surrounded by his, you know, by his army, his soldiers. And then they said, uh, he said to Mu'ad and Ubay, says, you see that man there on that horse? That's him, that's Abu Jahl. He says, before I finish, they jumped and they flew like they were flying. They went and they tried to, you know, and then they they they, they bypassed, bypassed everyone until they reached uh, until they reached uh, uh, يعني, uh, Abu Jahl, and then both of them they they you know one hit struck him from one side and the other one struck him from the other side, you know, and they tried to kill him, and they did in fact. But then what happened was Ikrima, the son of Abu Jahl, saw them, and then he came running after them. So they ran back into the camps of the Muslims because their aim was to kill Abu Jahl. So they ran back. As they were running back, Ikrimah hit one of them and hit him on his shoulder. So he cut off his hand, his arm, you know, his 
arm was cut off but it was still attached to his uh, body through a piece of skin subhanallah a small piece of skin was still you know holding his arm together so when he was running you know his arm was bothering him this is Mu'ad. when he was running his arm was bothering him so what did he do? He says I put my arm on the ground I put my foot on on against my on my on my on my arm on my hand and I snatched it out this is just scary just listening to this right he says I put my my foot I stepped on my hand and I stepped, snatched my 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 whole arm off of my body and then I ran back into the Muslim side they came to Rasulullah ya Rasulullah I killed Abu Jahl uh, 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 Mu'awwad says no Rasulullah I killed him Mu'awwad says no I killed him Mu'awwad says no I killed him the Prophet says you both killed him Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Allahumma salli wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad brothers and sisters something beautifully happened what happened the rain I mentioned yesterday what rain look in that camp during the night everybody went to sleep everybody went to sleep the Quraysh in their camp they were partying drinking alcohol drinking and partying and dancing the Muslims they're making Qiyam then the Prophet ordered them to sleep but he kept he kept two you know people of course to guard he kept two people the guard even the guards slept one of the guards was saying seven times the sword fell off of my hand he also slept what happened Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully said that in the Quran لِيُطَهِّرَكُمْ بِهِ وَيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ رِجْزَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَرْبِطَ عَلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ وَيُثَبِّتَ بِهِ الْأَقْدَامِ Allah Azza wa Jalla sent down the rain, beautiful rain. Imagine like when you're when you're tired and then you take a shower to refresh, right? You're really tired and then you says, I just want to take a shower, you know? I want to take a shower to refresh and then you take that shower and then you feel refreshed. This rain that fell in the camp of the Muslims was just a beautiful rain, you know? To, to wake them up, to keep them refreshed, and also to make the ground firm so that when they walk, they're not going to be tired because it's all desert. So when they were walking, they're not tired because the rain made the earth be firm, the ground be firm. Whereas on the other side, subhanAllah, it was pouring rain so much so that the ground became so rough. When they were walking, Quraysh, they were so tired. By the time they reached the battlefield, they were extremely exhausted. So rain is rain, subhanAllah. It's the same rain. Here, it was beautiful rain to wake them up, to refresh them, to make the ground look firm. And on the other camp, subhanAllah, the rain was flooded. Ajib, it is one of the soldiers of Allah Azza wa Jal. But Allah sent down more soldiers. What soldiers, brothers and sisters? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ يُوحِي رَبُّكَ إِلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَنِّي مَعَكُمْ فَثَبِّتُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سألقي في قلوب الذين كفروا الرعب فاضربوا فوق الأعناق واضربوا منهم كل بنان ذلك بأنهم شاقوا الله ورسوله ومن يشاقق الله ورسوله فإن الله شديد العقاب ذلكم فذوقوا وأن للكافرين عذاب النار and Allah has just sent down the angels. And Allah sent down the angels. Alfin min al malaikati muldifin. Angels came in down. One thousand angels came down, led by Jibril himself. They came down wearing green turbans, with their swords, and their swords were from fire. The Sahabi would say. We saw they, we saw uh, we were fighting, and before I strike, one of them says, Before I strike the enemy, his head flew in the air. Before even me touching him, his head flew in the air. And they were looking into their necks, they saw that they were, the necks had some, you know, some burn in them. What kind of burn? The Prophet told them, Those are the angels. The angels they fight, they had swords from, from fire. The angels came to support them, to help them. The help of Allah Azza wa They passed the tests. They were tested. They were trialed. They came. They were not ready. But when they gave in, when they submitted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help 
came in form of rain, in form of peace. Even a dream. When they slept, they saw dream. And in the dream, they saw that they outnumbered Quraysh. Subhanallah. Naam. They saw that Muslims outnumbered Quraysh. All the Quraysh outnumbered the Muslims in terms of number. But subhanallah, when they looked at them, they said, oh, they were just few. We thought they were more, but they were only few. On, on, subhanallah, but in contrary, in the other you know, camp, Quraysh looking at the Muslims, they looked like, wow, there are many numbers. What happened? We thought they were only 300 or so, but they looked like they were masses, like massive camp. Allah threw that, threw fear into the heart of Quraysh. Into the heart of Quraysh. Abu Jahl died. Umayyah ibn Khalaf died. Uqba ibn Mumayyad died and got killed. All those people, brothers and sisters, who used to abuse the Sahaba, the elite of Quraysh, who persecuted the Sahaba, the majority got killed. When they were thrown into this graveyard, came the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, addressing them one by one. Oh, so and so, oh, so and so, oh, so and so. Have you found what Allah has promised you? Have you? I found what Allah has promised me. Have you found what Allah has promised you? The Sahaba said, Rasulullah, you're talking to them. They're dead. They're dead. He says, yes, but they hear me better than you hear me. They hear me now better than you are hearing me. But this is only applicable to the Prophet. You cannot go to somebody who's dead and then you start talking to that person who's dead. He says, he hears me. No. <laughs> who's dead? He's dead. Khalas is gone. But this is, was applicable only to the Prophet Muhammad when he was talking to, you know, uh, to the graveyard, to, the, to these, uh, uh, to these uh, uh, people when they, de when they died, when they got killed. And the Prophet, it was not narrated or reported that the Prophet used to go to the graves and talking to the, uh, talking to the, you know, the, to, the, to the dead. Although there was this dua, of course, when you go to a graveyard, you make a dua for the dead people. But it is not prescribed when you go to a, uh, to a graveyard and start talking to the person who's dead. Okay, mom, this is what happened. Dad, this is what happened. This is what happened. <laughs> who's dead? He's dead. You can make du'a for them. You can make du'a for them. You can give sadaqah on their behalf, on their name. You can go for hajj or umrah by proxy on their behalf. You know, these things will, they will receive in their graveyard. But you going and talking to them and whatnot, no, it's not been prescribed, my brothers and sisters. So Quraysh lost, but they could not, they could not absorb that bitterness of them losing that battle, which going to lead the following year to another battle, the battle of Uhud. Another amazing story. Brothers and sisters, maybe some of you have gone with me for Hajj or Umrah. Maybe, I don't know, maybe some of you have gone with me for Hajj or Umrah. Because normally when I go for Hajj al Umrah, when I go to Medina, I take people to that Mount of the Archers. The Mount of the Archers in Medina. In there, I tell them the story of Uhud. I bring it live. I show them the camp where the Muslims were camping. And I show them where Quraysh were camping. I show them what uh, Khalid bin Walid was going around. I show them things. I make that live, that battle live. People, they cry. People shed tears because it's live in that Mount of the Archers. I hope I can take you with me for Hajj al-Umrah one day, inshallah, so that you can experience this. People who've been for Hajj al-Umrah more than five, six, seven times, they said, and Allah is my witness, we've been to so many Umrahs and Hajj Sheikh, but with you, it was, it's totally different. With you, it's totally different. Wallahi, this is what people, they say. We've been for Umrah, Ya Sheikh, many times. Or Hajj, with you, it's very different. I make it different. So, brothers and sisters, this battle of Badr resulted in another battle, the battle of Uhud. What happened in Uhud? What happened to the Muslims? Who won that battle, actually? Because some people, they say, Quraysh won. Some people, they said, no, the Muslims won. But who actually won? Although the Muslims, we know that they have lost. But who won? 
in the battle of Uhud. What happened in the battle of Uhud? What was that dream about? The dream that the Prophet saw. He saw a dream. In that dream, he saw uh, cows being slaughtered. He saw crookedness in his uh, sword. And he saw a shield protecting him. What did he interpret that dream about? An amazing, amazing lesson about leadership and about decision making. We will derive that from the battle of Uhud, brothers and sisters. Now, as I promised you, sisters and brothers, I will leave the battle of Uhud until next week, inshallah. But before you go, my promise is the poem. My promise to you is the poem. So I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here, right? And we'll carry on. I will resume about the Sira and the, and the, uh, the battle of Uhud next week, inshallah ta'ala. But for now, my promise. And my promise is my poem that I promise, inshallah ta'ala. A letter from a wife to her husband. Are you guys ready? Shazia Mu'nisa Yashmin, Saidant Wahman, Ifran Hussein, Hafiz Khan, Muhammad. Are you guys ready for my poem? It's a beautiful poem. Remember, I promised, and I'm keeping my promise. So who's ready for the poem, inshallah? Who's ready for the poem, guys? Shazia, she said yes. Said and, and Alex Hajj said yes. And Hafiz Khan said yes. Who's ready for this amazing poem? It's a letter from a wife to her husband. You, 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 it's the letter. Make it as if it is addressed to you or from you, okay? Feel that this letter is addressed to you or from you. All right? Tasneem, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. Mashallah, Tasalina and Ifran and Tasneem and Wan. Mashallah. All right, so I want you to feel, okay, those of you on, on Facebook as well, on Instagram, light spread, yalla, we're ready. Uh -huh. I want you to feel like this letter is addressed to you or from you to your husband or inshallah to your future husband if you're not married. If you're not married. Okay. I don't know how to start this now. I'm so... There's so many emotions happening because this poem hit me hard. This poem hit me hard. I was struggling with it today. I truly, truly struggled with it today. <sighs> Shall I go on? Shall I start? Let's say Bismillah. Shall we say Bismillah? Bismillah. I will say it in Arabic, then I will give you the translation in English, okay? I will say it first in Arabic, and then I will give you the translation in English. All right? Bismillah. I don't know if I can sing it though, because singing it just made me it just i don't know I'm, I'm 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 i cannot guarantee i cannot guarantee my tears not falling or not flowing i will try i will try <laughs> حيث التقيت كعاد قلبي نابضا وجرى هواك بداخلي مجرى دمي وشعرت حطنك دافئا ورأيتني رغم الحياء ذوبي فيه وأرتمي وشعرت حضنك دافئا حضنك دافئا ورأيتني رغم الحياء أدوب فيه وأرتمي قل لي أيا رجلا لأي قبيلة ولأي عصر أو لجنس تنتمي قل لي أيا رجلا لأي قبيلة ولأي عصر أو لجنس تنتمي 
ولمن تعود أصول عينيك التي أضحت قنادي للضياء لعالمي قل لي أيا رجلا لأي قبلات ولأي عصر أو لجنس تنتمي ولمن تعود أصول عينيك التي أضحت قنادي للضياء لعالمي حيث التقيتك عاد قلبي نابضا وجرى هواك بداخلي مجرى دمي حيث التقيتك عاد قلبي نابضا وجرى هواك بداخلي مجرى دمي وشعرت حضنك دافئا ورأيتني رغم الحياء أدوب فيه وأرتمي قل لي أيا رجلا لأي قبيلة ولأي عصر أو لجنس تنتمي قل لي أيا رجلا لأي قبيلة ولأي عصر أو لجنس تنتمي ولمن تعود أصول عينيك التي أضحت قنادي للضياء لعالمي ولمن تعود أصول عينيك التي أضحت قنادي للضياء لعالمي She says, she says, when I met you, my heart started beating. But what she meant here is as if her heart was not pumping, but when she met her husband, her lover, her husband, her heart started beating. Her heart started beating. And she says, and your love runs inside my bloodstream. So when I met you, my heart started beating and your love ran inside my bloodstream. And she says, and I felt your warm hug and I saw myself. I felt your warm hug and I saw myself. Despite my modesty, despite my modesty, I dissolved into it and I threw myself away. Yani in his love. Despite her modesty, she says, and I felt you a warm hug and I saw myself. Despite my modesty, I dissolved into it and I threw myself away. And then she says something beautiful here. She says, tell me, O man, tell me, O man, from what tribe, what age and gender you belong to? Yani, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Tell me, O man, from what tribe, what age, and what gender you come from? And what origin are your eyes that illuminated my world? What are the origin of those eyes that have illuminated my world? So he replied to her. He replied to her. Would you like to hear the reply, sisters and brothers? Would you like to hear the reply? Because now he's going to reply back to her. Would you like to hear the reply? Would you like to hear the reply? Yes or yes? Yes? This is what he replies back to her. He says... He says, نعم. إن قلت أكتب في فضائل حبها أو إن قلت أكتب في فضائل حبها نفد المداد وجفت الأوراق إن قلت أكتب في فضائل حبها نفد المداد وجفت الأوراق كنت أحسب أعرف الحب قبل أعرفك كنت أحسب أعرف الحب قبل أعرفك 
وعرفت العشق قبل أن أعشقك إن تسألوا مني الفؤاد إن تسألوا مني الفؤاد يجيبكم بالنبض أن العشق قد أضحى لها رباه زدنا بالمحبة دائما واجعل لي كل السرور مآلها إني عشقت من النساء يقوتة هي حياتي زاد الصلاح جمالها إني عشقت من النساء يقوتة هي حياتي زاد الفلاح جمالها رباه زدنا بالمحبة دائما واجعل لي كل الصور مآلها إني رضيت بها ربي يا خالق إني رضيت بها وعنها خالقي فاختم بخير دائما أعمالها أحبك أحبك بعينين تعشق النظر إليك أحبك بعينين تعشق النظر إليك أحبك بلسان يكتفي من الغزل بك أحبك بعينين تعشق النظر إليك وأحبك بلسان يكتفي من الغزل بك لو كنت أملك أن أهديك عيني لوضعتها بين يديك لو كنت أملك أن أهديك قلبي لنزعته من صدري وقدمته إليك لو كنت أملك أن أهديك عمري لسجلت أيامي باسمك لكني لا أملك سوى الكلمات من صادق التعبيرات فلتكن هذه هديتي إليك من يقول أني أحبك ما عرف قيمة غلائي من يقول من يقول أني أحبك ما عرف قيمة غلاك أنت فوق الحب كله أنت فوق الحب كله أنت في عين ملاك أنت في عين ملاك هي عنوانها عنواني هي حياتي عنوانها عنواني هي حبيبتي بستانها بستاني ورفيقة العمر الذي أيامه في عينها أزكى من الريحان ورفيقة العمر الذي أيامه في عينها أزكى من الريحان يساس He says, if you were to ask me to write about my virtues of my love towards her, he says, all the inks will be dry and papers will run out. If I were to describe the virtue of how much I love her, he says, the ink will dry. And there will be no more papers left. He says, I used to thought, or I thought that I knew about love before I met her. Now he's talking to his wife. He says, I thought I knew about love before I met her. وعرفتُ العشق قبل أن أعشقك. And he thought, if you were to ask the Fu'ad, 
if you were to ask my heart, my heart will respond. The heart will respond by the beating. Mention her name. He says, I love you. I love you through these eyes who love to look at you. And I love you with a tongue that can't fill, that can't stop from talking about you. I love you with, a, with an eyes that love looking at you and I love you with a tongue that can stop talking about you. If I were to offer you my eyes, he says, if I were to offer you my eyes, I would have put them before your hands. If I were to offer you my heart, I would have snatched it out from my breast and put it behind, beside you. If I were to offer you my whole life, I would have recorded my days with your name. That's, that's it. If I were to offer you my whole life, I would have sajjaltu ayyami bi ismiki. I would have recorded my days with your name. But I can only offer you these words that are coming from the depth of my heart. Whoever says that I love you truly does not know the true meaning of love. Whoever says that I love you truly does not know the meaning of love. Why? Because you are above every love. Although the love of Allah should come first, of course. But he says, whoever says that I love you does not really know about love. Because you are above every love. In my eyes, you are my malak. In my eyes, you are my malak. You are my life. You are my garden. You are my life. You are my garden. And you are rafiqatul darb. And you are my partner in this life. Whereas our aim is to reach Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala. A beautiful letter from a wife to her husband and a beautiful reply from the husband to his wife. Those of you who are married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prosper that marriage. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you hold hands in this dunya and make you hold hands in the hereafter. Those of you who are not married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah bless them and bless you all with the appropriate, insha'Allah ta'ala, uh, spouse who will be the coolness to your eyes, insha'Allah. And those of you who may be going through a divorce, if there is khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite you back with your spouse. And if there is no khair in it, and Allah knows best, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you something better. Those of you who may be going through divorce, again, if there is khair, may Allah bring you back together. And there is, if there is no khair, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you someone better. May Allah bring you someone better who deserves you, who deserves your heart, who deserves your love, who deserves your sacrifice, who deserves you as a person. May Allah bless you all. May Allah reward you all. I'm done. Zakumullah khair, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed today's session. I hope you enjoyed the poem. I'm sorry I could not really sing it because I just 
I became so emotional. It just uh, it hit me hard. <clears throat> I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you all and to help us all to practice and to convey. Zakumullah khair. Barakallah fikum. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah ta'ala. Right. I hope to see you all next week, inshallah. Thank you, Saidan. Thank you, Salina. Thank you, Hafiz. Thank you, Yashmin. Thank you, Nawal. Thank you, Light Spread. Thank you, um, Baizulatis. Thank you. Thank you, Romina. Thank you, Mu'nisa. Thank you, Munisa. Thank you. Oh, Lady Mahir. Mashallah. Long time no see. Thank you, Lady Mahir. Thank you, Layla, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yashmin. Thank you. Thank you, Zakum Khair. Those of you on Facebook as well. Thank you so much for joining. May Allah bless you. May Allah reward you. Barakallah fikum. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you, Zoya Laray. Thank you. Life spray. Thanks again for joining. Thank you for seeing. Thank you for coming. Facebook. Thank you, Ifran Hussein. Thank you so much for joining again. Barakallah fikum. Thank you. Barakallah fikum. Zakumullah khair again. May Allah bless you all. May Allah reward you all. Barakallah fikum. Thank you, Alex Hajj. Thank you for being there. Thank you, Alex. Zakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you, Tasneen. Thank you, Tasneen. Assalamu alaikum. Tasbah ala khair. Assalamu alaikum.